his luggage which seemed to be on standby except for a few additions like a clean shirt or two. Junior was one of the best journalists with the Make It Happen media stations, MIH. Hence, most of the top stories were often assigned to him. Therefore, he took a few minutes and went to hospital to inform Riziki of the trip that had come up. When he walked in, she was overly excited. She started, Junior, there is a question I have long to ask. Where? Just then his phone rang and he walked out. When he came in, he bade her bye and left in a hurry. That evening for the first time, Junior left for a destination reluctantly and down hard. Two weeks later, Becho was charged from hospital. She had not been able to communicate with Richard since Junior left the country. Junior's line was unreachable since he was on a secret assignment. The hospital had made arrangements for her flight back to Kenya. The doctor said she could recover it faster at home. So for the next two months, she was told not to exert herself with much physical work. One Sunday morning, due to the lightning the previous night, she woke up to find there was no electricity supply. She decided to boil water on her cooker and pour in her bucket. She remembered she needed to make a call. She took her mobile phone to make the call. It slipped from her hand and fell into the bucket of water she had already poured. When she retrieved it and tried turning it on, it would not come on. She dipped it in a bowl of rice for about one hour, as she had heard other people do so, that water could drain out with no success. All the numbers she had stored in it, stored in it went with it. Oh no, she cried. What will I do? How will I reach the people who helped me? For about one week, she had no means of communication. She wondered whether Richard or Junior had tried calling her all this while. Her main concern was how she could return their acts of kindness. For some reason, she could not remember his number because in Britain, she, re she rarely dialed it. Junior too tried calling and finally gave up. Desperation filled her heart and she found herself making a prayer to God whom she had not given much thought since she completed her first degree at the university. Two months later, Becho reported back to work. At first, adjusting was difficult, but with the help of her colleagues and students, she managed to catch up. She kept looking at her phone with the hope that the calls she longed for would come, but none did. Her life fell back into routine and she became lackluster. She decided to enroll at a gymnasium nearby her, resident, nearby her residence because she could feel that her health might soon give way. Soon, she was gaining life and vitality in her body. She also made a decision to move away from Harlingham area because it kept reminding her of the accident that almost cost her life. One Saturday, she woke up early to do a general cleaning of her house. She worked until noon when she decided to take a break. She decided to check her email. A surprise awaited her. An application she had made a year earlier came through. She had been given a year off to go and teach in Venezuela University. Her excitement knew no limits. She had been given three months to report. She spent most of her time finalizing on her work at the University of Woman. Handed over to her successor, Dr. Kilo Humi, a hardworking gentleman whose leadership skills were outstanding. She knew the department would be well looked after. She managed to send an email to Dr. Kai, who expressed her delight in her and encouraged her that the sky was no longer the limit. She could achieve her dreams as she so desired. Finally, my dreams as I desired. How I wish I could. Nixon, where on earth are you? She wondered as she packed her last book with her suitcase. She decided to take a break and rest on her favorite seat for a few minutes. Hello, Becha. How have you been? It's been a long while since I heard from you, the caller said sweetly. Nixon, what a pleasant surprise. I've really missed you, she responded excitedly. When are you coming? Oh, I'm at your door. Please open. Becha was woken up from her reverie by the sound of an alarm, a fire alarm within the estate. Oh no, a house by must have caught fire, she said. 
Then she heard people screaming. Suddenly, she stood up and went to check through her window. To her dismay, the view was not very clear. So she left her house and went to check. While standing beside the onlooker, the onlookers caught in the confusion, she remembered that she had not locked her house. In panic, she ran back to the house. When she reached her door, she heard a sound. That filled her heart. She decided that she would not get into the jaws of the robbers. As she was still wondering what to do, the security guard came by to deliver her dustbin payment receipt. She held it, she held on to him and insisted he must check who was in the house. Into the house they tiptoed. The security guard led as Betcha followed closely. They paid close attention and the noise was coming from the kitchen. Then something dropped onto the ground. Betcha jumped towards the guard, knocking him to the ground. He quickly stood up, gained courage and walked to the kitchen door. He started to open the door widely, but Betcha stopped him. She told him to peep through the slight opening. 